Hello everyone, uh, I'm Xuan Yifeng. So today I will present uh, our work, Adversary Graph Contractive Learning with Information Realization. So this is a joint work with my collaborators, uh, Bao Yu and Dr. Zhu and Dr. Tom. So in today's talk, I will first introduce some background and the program we study, and then I will discuss the, our solution in detail. Then I will show some experimental results for our method. And then finally, I will give the takeaways for today's talk. So in this work, we studied the graph representation learning, where the input is a graph G consists of the adjacency matrix A and the feature matrix X. And we will output the node mediating matrix H, which is in a lower dimensional space and can be used for downstream tasks. Uh, and what we want to learn is a mapping function F, which takes the input of the original graph and to this uh, node embedding matrix. <clears throat> the graph conscious learning is a powerful tool uh, to resolve the graph representation learning problem. Uh, where the traditional methods are based, based on the proximity, where the nodes that are close to each other are defined as the positive sample, while the nodes that are far, far away together are defined as the negative sample. The key idea of the graph contrast learning is to maximize the similarity among the positive samples against the negative samples. Well, recently, uh, uh, augmentation-based contrast learning method is proposed, which is more powerful and simple to implement. Well, uh, for this method, we first generate two uh, views using data augmentations from the original graph. And the corresponding nodes in two views will be treated as the positive samples where all other pairs will be treated as negative samples. Well, in detail, this data augmentation based uh, graph conscious learning method has the following objective. Well, uh, UI and VI are the node embedding of node I uh, in two views separately, where G is a measurement of the similarity. And the, the objective function is to maximize this GUIVI against all uh, similarities of the negative samples such as GUIVK and GUIUK. Uh, it's was mentioned that the similarity measure here, GAB, uh, is usually set as the e to the theta AB divided by tau, where theta is the cosine similarity and the tau is the temperature. So this gives us the influence loss. And uh, this is usually proportional to the uh, density ratio, which is de defined by PA given B divided by PA. However, there are two challenges for this data augmentation based uh, graph conscious learning methods. So first is that the data augmentations on the graph domain is not as intuitive as they are on the visual domain. So for example, on the left-hand side, so we have two pictures which are both heavily perturbed or like transformed from the original picture, but we can still recognize the, them as the uh, instance of the dog uh, from our human intuition. However, on the right-hand side, we have two graphs, but there's no way for us to tell whether they are the same or have the uh, same distribution. So this gives us very hard uh, hardness in recognizing whether data mutations on the graph domain are good enough or too aggressive or too conservative. And the second is the vulnerability. In our, exper in our experiment, we iteratively masking out some features and dropping feature uh, edges. And we observe sharp drop in the cosine similarity between the positive pairs. Uh, for example, at the 30, 30 iteration, with like 50% features and edges uh, uh, dropped and masked, we can observe that the cosine similarity is already under 0 0.5. So this is usually not the case on the visual domain while the 50% features all still gives a very uh, good accuracy in recognizing the positive instances. And we all can also observe that the variance of the similarity becomes much larger as we uh, add in the perturbations. So to resolve these two challenges, we propose our framework area, which can be over uh, outlined as the follows. So first given a uh, input uh, graph G, we generate two augmentation views G1 and G2 as in the standard graph contrast learning uh, framework. Then we will generate an adversary view uh, from the original graph to maximize the conscious loss with respect to one of the data augmentation view G1. Then we will, uh, on top of that, we introduce an additional technique called information regulation, uh, which are defined on the same nodes in three different views to regularize the feature space. And the, the final 
uh, training loss will combine the original graph contrasting loss and the adversary graph contrast loss, and finally the information realization term. So I will first talk about how to generate the adversary view uh, for an automatic data augmentation uh, format. So our input will be an original graph G, augmented view G1, and the contrastive loss function L contrastive. And what we output will be an adversary view, uh, G adversary, which maximizes the contrastive loss with respect to G1, but on the uh, meantime, it will be restricted to the constraints on the total perturbations from the original graph for both the adjacency matrix and the feature matrix. So in this work, we use the project gradient descent, uh, the, the PGD attack as our attack method. So define LA and LX as the perturbations on the edges and the features respectively. So according to the following transformation, we make LA to take a value from zero and one for each element. So if uh, the value is zero, then there will be no modifications. And if the value is one, then there will be the modification at that position, either uh, delete an edge or add an edge. However, LA is a discrete uh, data. So uh, for the optimization purpose, we release it, release it to its convex hole L2 dot A in the range of zero to one for every element. And uh, in this case, each element of L2 dot A will correspond to the probability of the edge, pro edge modification at that position. PGD attack is an iterative attack method. Well, for each time step, uh, T minus one, we have the perturbation uh, uh, L, and we will derive the gradient of the contrastive loss with respect to the current perturbation and the atom together. And finally, we'll project this total amount to a, a local ball defined by like the S A and S X here, uh, which uh, in which case we want to make the uh, perturbations in every direction uh, not too large. Specifically for the projection operations, uh, on the adjacency matrix, we uh, define the following uh, projection operations. So let PZ uh, will clip the input into the range 0 and 1 element wisely. If uh, P of the Z had the input to our adjacency matrix projection operation, satisfy this total uh, amounts under the constraint, then we just take PZ as the output. Well, otherwise, we found a minimum mu. Well, we first minimize this mu from the original input element wisely. Then, if the then let make the uh, this P uh, after clipping, the total perturbation will equal to the delta A. Well, for the projection operation on the uh, feature perturbation LX, we simply clips this LX into the range minus delta X and the delta X element wisely. Well, the graph of the uh, graph adversary, uh, the adversary graph contrast of learning, uh, the contrast of the constraints are defined over the whole graph. What we're not considered like the structure of each node. Uh, and here, actually, what we care is the in uh, in our graph representation learning is the each instance is the node. So here we define an information realization to uh, stabilize the training because uh, in in some cases then the graph a diversity graph conscious learning could be imbalanced on, among different nodes. So according to the data processing equality, we have the following uh, relationships. Uh, so it states that for a node I, it's embedding in the original graph and the one of the data machine view, for example, G1 here, should be greater than the similarity uh, between the this embedding of node I in two data mutation uh, views. And uh, we give, define di as the quantity that violates these uh, inequalities. And uh, we will take the mean of this uh, max di zero as the, we'll only penalize this for di if di is greater than zero as our information realization. And finally, I will sketch the, each step of our adversary graph conscious learning method. So in the first step, we will sample a subgraph GS and then uh, we will generate augmentation views G1 and G2, and we generate adversary view G adversary, and we will minimize the final loss, which has three parts, the congestive loss, adversary congestive loss, and information realization. And here, epsilon one and epsilon two controls portion of the last two parts. And finally, we'll update the epsilon one to gamma epsilon one for every T epochs, in case you want to allow for additional, uh, the gradually increasing portion of the adversary congestive loss. 
And then we should start experimenting the results of our data set, uh, our method. So uh, we, we evaluate our method on six data sets, Coral Site Theater, Amazon Computers, Amazon Photo, Cosa CS, and Cosa Physics. And we use airdropping and feature masking as a data augmentations. And uh, we evaluate our method on the node classification accuracy on both the real world and attacked graphs. And they are obtained by logic regression with l on learned node bindings. So first of all, the performance on the real world graph. Uh, we observed that area can achieve consistent improvement uh, over the previous baselines. So for example, on these three data sets, iCeter, Amazon Computers, and Amazon Photo, uh, area achieves a very large uh, advantage against the baselines. Well, on the other hand, if we compare our basic framework, GC and Grace, so GCA uses an adaptive uh, data combination method based on the human knowledge. And the GRIS is a, it's basic version with uh, no human knowledge in the data combination. We can observe that the improvement achieved by this human knowledge defined data combination is actually very minor compared with the ARIO. Then we try to evaluate the robustness of ARIO. Uh, we use meta attack to do the topology attack and the random masking for the attributes perturbations. And we observe the consistent robustness on the attack graph. Here we compare area with GC and MV, MVGRL. We can observe a large margin uh, between area and these two strong baselines. For example, on size theater, area achieves like 4% uh, lead, which is much larger than the margin in the previous table. And on the other hand, previous, previous methods uh, can be robustness, uh, can be robust not only on specific data sets. For example, GMI is robust on size theater, but not, not on the Amazon computers. Where GCA is robust on COSA physics, but not on Cora. We then update our method uh, against the two uh, components introduced in our framework. The first is the adversary training. So we increase our adversary coefficient in so one from zero to two. And then we can see here, uh, although there are some variants, adversary training could always help the graph congestive learning. So for example, on core right, it achieves like one, uh, 1% 1 and on the size theater, it achieves like 2% improvement. Uh, well, it notes that when epsilon one equals to zero, our method reduced to uh, like basic version of GRIS, which is uh, shown in the uh, very beginning that framework uh, in our slide. And uh, this subgraph sampling is not always beneficial. For example, on core right, it makes the performance worse, but on size theater, it makes the performance better. Uh, so we conclude that our, the adversary training is the main source of improvement for our method. Next, we uh, fix all our parameters and uh, uh, ablate the effect of information realization. So we have to admit that information realization is not always needed in our framework because its main purpose is for the stability. So here we increase the information realization coefficient epsilon two from zero to two, but we can see that on the Amazon photo, introducing the information realization could make the training successful while no information resolution could make the loss non-decrease. And uh, so we can come to the conclusion that the information resolution could stabilize the training. And finally, the takeaways. Uh, what we, the method we study here in this work is the augmentation-based graph conscious learning. And it faces two challenges. The first is unintuitive data augmentations and second one is the vulnerable to perturbations. And our solution is to use the adversarial training and in this work with the PGD attack. And we also use information realization for the stability and the subgraph sampling for the scalability. And our results show that we can achieve a better node classification accuracy and high robustness on the attack graph uh, and the information realization could stabilize the training. And then that's all for today's talk. Uh, thank you everyone. Please let me know uh, through email if you have any questions about uh, our work and all this presentation. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Sheng Yu. Um, I would also encourage audience members to ask questions now, as well as through email. Um, yeah, I have one questions? quick question. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the great talk, uh, very, very interesting topic. Uh, so can, can you comment on the time complexity, like uh, you did a lot of experiments on um, the accuracy, like performance and other things, but um, can you comment on uh, uh, time yeah, so, how uh -huh. to perform compared to other methods and uh, yeah can you can you um, mm -hmm. co comment on this like uh, how is, there, is there any kind of experiment for this yeah so in like our uh, paper we apply uh, we apply uh, 
that we supplied the uh, time training analysis of the time complexity like at the in appendix. So what we do here is to use a subgraph sampling technique GS. What we, and what we found is that even we use a very small subgraph sampling uh, a subgraph size, for example, 500 nodes, we can still achieve very solid improvements for using this adversary graph conscious learning method. Uh, well, but for the future structure, uh, I have to admit that this still this is not enough. But for our like the experiments, like the with like the thirty four thousand nodes, this is enough to make it very fast. Uh, at least fast on the faster than the Grace and the GCA uh, on these two data sets because the subgraph size is invariant. Uh, but for like the future work, uh, one possible solution to resolve this. Uh, time competitive on even larger graph, maybe like million of nodes is to like define this adversary on just the sound, some of the anchor nodes. And uh, for example, we can choose like the three nodes here, uh, three nodes here, and only uh, do the derivative over these three nodes, not on the whole graph. So by, by, by far it is the uh, time concept is uh, resolved by the subgraph sampling on like the other data sets. Okay, got it, got it. And another uh, thing like, uh... Uh, you mentioned in slide uh, 20, I think. So like for Quora graph, you didn't observe any improvement uh, for uh, such a you, you saw improvement. So can you, um, exp I mean, can you mention or comment on this, like why this is the case? Uh, sorry, so for, how could you repeat the question? Uh... Yeah, so for uh, such a data set, you, um, you I mentioned like uh, you got uh, improvement uh, mm -hmm. using method, but for core data set, um, you couldn't um, uh, you couldn't um, overcome or um, didn't uh, outperform the base baseline or like the standard GCN method type of um, GNN. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But G uh, yeah, GCN method did uh, also yeah. So this is like I think the. So we follow the training schema for um, the, like the GCA. Like, uh, so right now, what we observe is that it is in, indeed better than like previous like super supervised like method. Uh, but I think the evaluation strategy is maybe kind of different because for GCN they're using the so in our experiment we do not use the like original split split we just do some random split. That, that is the case. Oh, okay. Thank you, Daniel. 